to begin our project, we need to have our reference images in place in the viewport. Now we have a front view and we also have a side view. And the easiest way to do that is just to pull it from the directory, just drag and drop the appropriate image into the viewport. I have this front view I'm dragging from my desktop. I have my side view, I'm dragging it into the right. And just hit A to frame that up. Now with the side view selected, I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to duplicate and I'll just relabel this as left. And then I'll select the one above it and I will rename that as right. The one above that as front. I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to turn the transparency up a little bit because that's just a little too much. Now that we've got our front view, our right view, and our left view, make sure that each of these views is the projection type is correct. So we've duplicated the right, relabeled it as the left, come down here to projection type, and change that to left. So now we're, it doesn't matter if we're on the right side or if we're on the left side of our model, we can see it. Just if you have a preference, if you prefer to work on the left or the right. What we're going to do, we need to, to resize our reference art to make sure that this reference art is in real world proportions. That's going to be helpful to model it real world proportions so that any accessories that we add to her, if we've modeled other things in the past we want to bring in, it's all going to be appropriately sized. And the easiest way to do that, come to my model tab. And I'm just going to create a primitive. A, I'm going to control click on that, on that cube so that, let's just see this in advanced OpenGL. All right, so we have that cube selected. Now that is a one meter cube by default. We can see that by turning on our dimensions tool. One meter. I want her to be about five feet, five inches tall. So I need to size the cube first and then I'll resize the drawings. Under snaps and precision go to absolute scaling and this is what we have one meter so we'll type in five inches five feet five inches. Hit return. Is that right? Five feet by five inches. Return. There we go. Uniform scale and we can see it it's 1.651 meters. Or if we switch over to English, it's 5.5. Five. So that's good. We don't need the dimensions tool anymore. Now let's select our drawings and scale those down. Now I've worked ahead so I know that this needs to be scaled down to 6.5%. So 6.5%. And if we hide that mesh, that box, we can see, actually let's, let's bring it back. Let's go into wireframe mode so we can see that now she's about 5 feet 5. The other thing I want to do as a setup is that in item mode as you mouse over an item you get this pre-selection so you can see that this highlights. Well, I don't like to see that so I, what I'll want to do is I want to hide that behavior. So I'll select all of these and I'm going to go to groups. I'm going to create a new group from the selected items. I'm going to call it turns. Hit OK. You can see I've already done this. Okay, just all. So this is my group. You can see I have three items. I'm going to go to members selectable. I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so now in item mode when I mouse over I don't have access to, I cannot select anything in here in item mode. I still can select them, but I have to select them from the item list. So I'm going to select those. Control G, I'm going to create a group, call this turns. And now we're ready to bring in our geometry and start our modeling. So we're in the layout tab, and what we want to do is to start with a base mesh. Right, so we're going to use this low head, just double click it, it's going to bring it into the viewport. And this is going to be our starting point. Let's hit A, frame this up. I want to move this head 
select the item first and then we'll move it. Just move it into the general location of our face, of our head. And that's about right. And this is good, but I do want to see what I'm working on. So I'm going to assign a transparent material to that head so that we can actually see through the model back to our background images. So under the shader tree, we don't need the default shader that came in with that item, so we're just going to delete it. We're going to duplicate our base material. So duplicate. I'm going to relabel that as trans. We'll go ahead and label this as clay. That's going to be our op opaque material. Select trans and then here I want to pump this up to 100% and I'm going to change the color. I just like to have a little bit of a color difference so I, it helps to separate the black and white image in the background the color in the foreground. And then I'm going to tra um, assign some transparency. And let's just see what that's going to look like. I want to be able to see through it to my reference drawings. So I'm going to set this at the appropriate level. And you can change this up or down, whatever you like. I think 50% is going to work fine for, here, for, for me. Now, in this particular viewport, I don't like to see the reference drawings all the time, so I will hide those. So I'm just going to turn off my backdrop items in this particular viewport. These are on. They're going to stay on because obviously I'll need that. Now we're going to use the sculpting tools to start to manipulate our mesh. Now This is a symmetrical base mesh. You can use a sphere or you can use another kind of base mesh, whatever you like. Uh, since we have this at hand, I like to use this because it's got the nose and it's got the ears all in place. So that's going to work just fine for us. I don't need this bottom edge, so I'm going to select all those and just delete. I'm just going to go ahead and move this down. Now this next part of the process is going to be our initial set of our initial sculpting. With this low polygon model, we're going to move all of these things into place the nose, the ears, the shape of the head. We're just going to change the shape of this low polygon geometry. And this is really the first step of several that we're going to take to start getting this model into shape. I'm not concerning myself with the topology at all. This is just a rough sculpt. We're going to retopologize where our goal will be to pay attention to topology, but not at this stage. I like to work with lower polygon geometry to start with. It's a much more forgiving and quicker, to be honest, workflow than to subdivide a mesh and then sculpt on top of it. It's just a time saver, in my opinion. So let's move this neck it's going to come together pretty quickly. Again, especially working with low polygon geometry, you can move stuff around in a really quick way. I'm going to use the top view to make her head less egg-shaped, you can see. Just round it out. We're going to try and hit our profiles, our silhouettes, try to get those correct. and just start lining stuff up. It's not going to match up perfectly, of course, because we don't have nearly enough geometry, but that's not the point. Big forms, big shapes, big ideas at the beginning of the project, and then as we get a little closer, we set, we'll subdivide this mesh, and then we'll have more geometry to work with. And so our profile view, our front view, they'll all match up a lot better. So just rough this in. I'm going to take a little bit of time to, to do that, to rough this in. I'm going to move this ear over here. I've got the nose and the mouth. General, you know, Generally speaking, I've got these in a good place. I've got the, the brow in a pretty good place. I've got the roundness of the head. Now her hair is going to sit proud of that surface. So we just going. We don't need to bring this all the way out to the the, the hair's edge, and the concept art. 
just look at the volume, okay? Just look at the general structure Okay, silhouette in the front working pretty good. If you hold down the shift key when using any of the sculpting tools, you have you have access to the smoothing function, which is a nice and very quick workflow. Check the head for roundness. Some of that information is hidden from us from our views. So that's why we use multiple views. It's one of the good things about working in the quad view. You have everything contained here. So you can hop over to the front view, side view, in a very quick fashion to get a good perspective of what it is you're working on. All right, now I'm going to continue to tweak this just a little bit. But overall, this is a good start to our base mesh, our very first uh, rough sculpt. So let me refine that and then we'll subdivide it and continue on with the project. Now that we've tweaked the model at this low, really low polygon stage, we want to do a couple things to get to our next stage. You can see that I've relabeled this as our head 01. Now what I want to do next is just to duplicate that mesh. So hit escape there, I duplicate that. We're going to relabel this as head 2. And I want to create a group, and I'm going to call this support. So I'm going to select this head 1. So Control G. I'm going to relabel this as head support. And I like to do that to, and then I'll just hide the group. I like to keep versions of my geometry within the same file, within the same scene file, should I need to go back to it, do more work on it. I all have it, I have it all there contained. So next step, take the head O2, and we're just gonna hit D. Alright, so D is gonna subdivide our mesh, and you can see that we have more geometry to work with. Now we're gonna still keep with this general to specific workflow grab our move tool and continue in symmetry to shape the figure like we want it the better your effort in each of these stages then the better your results are in the next stage so that in other words if you take a little bit of time to get this lower polygon geometry correct the next stage is going to be a little easier in terms of man uh, maneuvering it around because you're doing less work. One of the things about working with control art is that we have a lot of information in the front and a lot of information fr in, in the side view, but what we don't have is information in the three-quarter view. And so what that means is that in we lose a lot of volume in this area you know, the, the side of, the, not the side of the face, but the three-quarter view. It's helpful to keep your model, keep turning your model around and be sensitive to the volume that we know is going to be there. So that affects the cheek, the jawline, the back of the head as well, this back quarter view and this back quarter view. So keep that in mind as you're working. Your model could be perfectly matched up with your front view and your side view, and you still would have um, a problem in the three-quarter view if you're not being sensitive to the volume that that three-quarter view has. We're getting a little bit closer and closer. I'm going to continue this workflow using the smooth tool, using the move tool. I'm just positioning the geometry. Again, I don't care about the topology so much as I care about the actual volume of the sculpt. Now I like using the sculpting tools. You might prefer to use the element move tool, which is T. That gives you a one-to-one -one ratio in terms of, of movement. You can see that I'm right-clicking. I have my move tool selected and I'm right-clicking to resize that. I like that fall off. It's a little, I find a little bit more forgiving and a little bit more gentle in terms of a finessing tool. I'm going to work on the ear. 
And just like with the first model, the first step, I'm going to work on this. We'll, then we'll, I'll just continue to tweak it. We'll subdivide it in the next part and just refine this sculpt, this base mesh, a little bit further. So when you're happy with that, with taking and sort of adjusting here and there, pushing and pulling of these points, we're ready to subdivide to our next level. And right, now you can see I've already got this in place, but first I just want to show you the things that I'm looking at at this part of the project. We can see from our front view, it matches up pretty well considering the low poly geometry. I'm just looking at mostly the silhouette, the jawline, the neckline, the ears, making sure I have the proper volume there. We can estimate where the hair, where the head is going to fall. The hair is going to poof out. Let's look at the the profile. There's not a lot of information in the mouth area, so that's going to come into play the next the next subdivision level a little bit more. The ear is in a, in a fairly good position. The jawline, where the jaw and the neck come together, that's in a good spot. Just do an evaluation, really, at this part when you have subdivided and we work on this second one which is the head two just to make sure that you've got a lot of these silhouettes nailed down the front view and the side view and then look at the three-quarter view and the the areas that I was talking about this three-quarter panel over here the section three-quarter view over here just to make sure it has a proper volume sometimes moving your model around from an underside looking up you can start to see some problems if there are any some errors we want to make sure that the forehead is fairly flat across the front we want to respect the um, the skull that's underneath there we're also going to add eyes uh, pretty soon, probably in the next, once we subdivide and tweak this model again, because we do need some eyes in here to react, to give us something to react to in terms of building the brow properly, sculpting that in place. Working without the eyes, you're just sort of working blind when you get to this next phase, so we're going to probably do that. Back of the head looks pretty good, so let's let's do that. I've gone ahead and duplicated that head 2, relabeled it as head 3, let me just go ahead and put this head 2 into this support layer. Select our head 3 and then hit D. Okay, and you can see that we've obviously got a lot more geometry to work with. And again, just going to go back, sort of tweak it, push, pushing and pulling a little bit more. Now that we have more definition in the mouth, that's going to start to come together a little better for us. Still not going to be you know, totally resolved, but again, we're working from general to specific. If we have the previous stage worked out and, that, and that's working for us, then these subsequent stages will come together a lot more easily and then ultimately will look a lot better. Areas that you can refine do. If there's not enough geometry there, just sort of estimate and, and produce an average. I want to pull down the edge of that nostril. So let's hit that profile underneath the lip pull that back a little bit and then just redefine the chin and you can see I'm really not doing that much just tweaking just a little bit here and there All right, now there's an area right here at the jawline which I just need to move around and see if that works so I don't have a lot of information right here in terms of volume I know in 2D what that line looks like and what it should look like in 3D it looks pretty good from the front view but the three-quarter view is really going to reveal that structure a little bit better. So take a look at that. It might take you a little bit of navigating to get the right perspective to view it. Probably bring that jaw down just a touch. Okay, again, these are just sort of tweaks. I'm going to introduce a cavity into the ear so we can start to see some of that volume. And that's better done in the three-quarter view. So I'm going to maximize that viewport just for a minute. I don't necessarily need the reference art right now. I sort of know what that's going to look like. Ears can sometimes be really difficult to model and sometimes as difficult as the actual face. So we're not going to have to worry about that. This particular character 
has simplified ears. So we're just going to work with that. But we do need to have this have the, the ear geometry worked out. It can be simplified or stylized, but it still needs to adhere to some good structure. You know, we still need to have we don't want to we don't want to come off as being um, accidental or incomplete in any part of the model. Again, it can be simplified and still look cool. All right, so you can see I just sort of tweaked that into place using the existing structure that was already established, but just sort of refining it and introducing that cavity there. And when we retopologize, that's that's enough information I think for now. We're just going to have a loop, little a little bit of a, a loop or a disc right here, and then this bigger arc to the ear, and that's going to be our simplified ear. And I don't think I think it'll look really nice. We'll also get, we're also going to have hair. She's going to have like a little sideburn right here, which will help to sell that ear. You just sort of forget about the details of the ear geometry. And of course if this is too simple simple for you, you want it more of a more detail in the ear, then you can certainly add more to it. And I think that's all I'm going to do right here. I might come back and tweak this a little bit more. Bring back my viewport. Now you can see the ear has now I've uh, I've lost the silhouette in the front, and that may or may not be okay with you. Sometimes it happens. You'll have discrepancies with the drawing versus the 3D. Ultimately, we need to look at what the 3D is going to do for us. If if it's if it works in three in the 2D, that's great. If it works in 3D, that's great. But we um, we really should pay more attention to what it looks like in the 3D. You don't want to misrepresent anything, but if it's if it doesn't look good in the 3D view, then the 2D art it's there's no there's no really no use in in that. So be be willing to walk away from that reference. Okay, we can pull some of that volume back out just to see if we can hit that silhouette. I don't want her ears to stick out too much, but the concept art in the front view looked all right. So we'll keep true to it as much as we can. Maybe come back and tweak a little bit of the nostrils. Again, just to get that work on the front view to... She has a really strong uh, sharp nose. So we want to be aware of that. We can create some hills and valleys at this part. And that's going to help us in the retopology stage or the next stage. Okay, it's all right to do that. So she's going to have some sharp features. So we want to give ourselves enough information at each stage of the subdivision process, this sort of workflow. We want to give ourselves enough information to get to the next part without having to, to to guess at all everything again. If it's a hill, make it a hill. If it's a valley, make it a valley. But the point is to establish some really good structure. We're exaggerating it a little bit so that when we subdivide, the volume that we lose is not that great. A little bit more work on the mouth. I'm okay with the shape of the head, okay, and that's a pretty good shape. Might be a little bulged in the side, but overall, that I think that's pretty good. So I don't necessarily use. I'm not going to use that viewport. We'll get rid of that here in a minute.
let's adjust the neck and then I'll probably tweak this a little bit more. We should probably drop in the eyes next and then subdivide and really tighten it up. Okay, so after a little bit more tweaking, I'm feeling pretty good about the condition that the model's in right now. I want to point out a couple of areas, things to focus on as you continue to tweak the different landmarks, different forms, and structure of the face. Things to take note of. We talked about the information that we have in the side view and the front view being a lot of information, but the information in the three-quarter views this, this side and over here, the cheeks, the jawline, the jaw area, there's not a lot there. Let me give you a couple of strategies, things to sort of check as you're moving forward. Looking at your model from an underneath view like this can help you to better realize what those forms are. Just in this particular case, the this model and a lot of, I guess most human models have this lower lip is going to sit just below the the upper lip in terms of space, I mean front to back. You can see that the upper lip is a little bit proud of the surface, more proud of the surface than this bottom lip, something to be aware of. Note that the roundness of both lips are there, so we have a nice arc. There are going to be teeth behind her her skin and that area. So we want to account for some volume there. So try and make this, try and keep some volume, some um, some structure in here. No need to make that too flat. You can see there's a little bit of a bulge on the outside. That's just, that's just for me to, just kind of as for me to be aware of, I, I need to include, I need to make sure that, that it's, it's convincing, this form is convincing in terms of having teeth behind here. If this is a little shallow, it'll it'll look a little too sunken in and it just won't look quite right. So that's that's this area is going to be really really important in terms of expression when we get to that part. Another thing too to take note of are the cheeks. Now we have some decent volume, but really once we we need a little bit more volume, I mean sorry, we need a little bit more information in the model that being the eyes so that we can get the proper placement of the cheekbones as it relates to the the rest of the face so you can see that we have some volume here but when it gets up into this area it's we really are just kind of guessing okay and we don't want to to guess so the eyes are going to we're going to subdivide the mesh again and then do a Put, drop the eyes in and then we'll do some final tweaks and sort of pushing and pulling to establish this defined brow area that she has around here the hills and valleys of the um, the eye um, the eyelids the lower lid that sort of thing one other thing and probably this will wrap it up for this part you can see also I've I've duplicated the the head three, I've dropped it in there. I've made this, relabel this as head four. I'm going to subdivide that here in a minute. The, another landmark, a structure that you'll need to be aware of and just just sort of take some time with it, okay? Really just sort of get into it and look at the form, try and understand a little bit of anatomy, look, use some reference should you need to uh, to get the, the shape, like the shape of the nostril. You can see that there's some a little bit of volume here that I've established, a nice little arc there. There's a little bit of a, a tuck indication. Uh, so we know that this, this right here is a form. We know that the tip of the nose, it's not super pointy. It might be a little bit more, little pointy there. We can refine that in the next pass. But uh, just sort of do an overall check of your model, indicate where the nostrils are gonna go. Uh, there's no need to necessarily do any beveling or anything like that right now. We'll um, address the kind of some deeper sculpted information in the next pass, but this will help to set up the next phase. So those are a few things to look at. Next we're going to take a look at dropping in the eyes, creating the eyes, dropping them in, and then we'll continue on with the project. So you can see what I've done is to duplicate the head three layer. I've relabeled it head four, then I've subdivided just like we've done with the previous geometry layers. 
and let's take a look at the mesh to see where we're at. So that subdivision process softened up the model details a little bit more and we'll have to come back in here and reestablish some of the sharp features of this particular model. So around the nose, around the definition of the nostril, and we do have more information in the lips this time, which is great. We're, we're inching a little bit closer toward defining each of the different landmarks of the face. So more geometry in the lips is a good thing at this point. And I think this will be enough information for us to work on before we get to the final retopology stage. Now, I'm going to drop in the eyes next and that'll help to help us to establish the proper volume of the cheek and also proper definition of the brow and the hills and valleys of those particular areas but i need to change my viewport around a little bit to just to better see what we're working on this top view is helpful in the previous stages but it's not doing us any good right now so it's it's just taking up space so I need to get rid of this particular viewport and i'm just going to right click on that little dot and delete that viewport and then this is just going to stay the same if I wanted to do each of these viewports you can as you would expect do the same thing too and if you needed to split this I want to split this top to bottom I could just control click and pull down from that dot and then I can just adjust this right or left whatever I want now moving over, this just gives me a lot more space to work with so you can see better, so I can work better. And I want to put the eyes in next. We'll hit in for a new mesh layer. We're going to hide our head for geometry and we're going to create a sphere. So grab that and we're not working in symmetry. We only need to work on one eye and we can duplicate that over. I'm going to draw out a sphere to be a little bit larger than what I think I might need. And then just sort of pull that into place. We can adjust this as we go, but I think this is a pretty good, probably a pretty good start. Holding down the control key, dragging on any of those little squares will scale your model uniformly. So keep that in mind. probably something like that. Now I want to match up, I want to use the topology of our sphere to just as a starting point, starting point for the eye. Make sure when you, that you've drawn your sphere, you've oriented, oriented on the Z axis so that we can have control of our poles like over here and then front to back. There's no need to um, draw it and then scale it, just make sure you create it in the right orientation. I want to use that edge, but it's not quite small enough. So I'm going to shrink that down a little bit, probably do a loop slice in there. But first, I want to copy that geometry because I want to have an outer layer of my eye. So I'm going to copy that new mesh layer, and then I'm just going to paste it. And I'll go ahead and label it outer. Hide that layer, come back to my mesh in here I'll select the, this ring and then I'll use an, uh, an action center of selection border okay and then I'll hit the scale key and then I'll just scale that flat so just like that we're gonna create the iris so with that selected spacebar to drop the tool hit the B key for the bevel then right click in your viewport pull that in slightly shift click pull it in again and then start to move this down we're going to create a little bit of a, a cavity here for the eye for the iris and this is going to help to catch the the light shift click again pull that in and then pull it down and it looks pretty good shift click again and then just pull this straight back that's good and then we can just delete that geometry we don't need that I probably want to tighten up this edge right there so I'll select a couple polygons along that loop and then alt C with a free selection a free mode and preserve curvature just click and drag close to the edge right there and then you subdivide that and you can see that we have a you know pretty decent geometry. Now I may want to come in here and shrink the iris down. I think I probably will at this point. 
try to match the um, I'm sorry the pupil try to match the size of the pupil in the concept art so we can do that scale that on two axes something like that and I probably will want to go ahead and loop slice this too so alt C drag this up here and then we'll drag this do the same thing here okay so we just tighten that geometry up and if that catches the light uh, well you know we, we should be able to catch a, a, a pretty decent amount of light when we get to the texturing part but we can always of course come back and adjust it depending on our materials and our lighting setup so we have control over that now that's the inside of the eye we're gonna do the outside of the eye next so here I want to just push this out. I could scale it or push it. So we'll just grab the push tool. In this application, it does really the same thing. All right, so with that still selected, I'm just going to hit the F key. I'm going to flip it, flip the polys. And that allows me to see sort of the negative space around there, the gap between that. Okay, and that's pretty good. I can scale that still. I can scale it in if I wanted to. So let's try that. It might be a little much. Let me subdivide that and see. Now, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so you can see that negative space around there, that little gap right there. I think that's good enough. All right, so hit the F key, flip that back around. And when we get to rendering, this this little uh, pole right here may or may not show up in the final render. This is going to have some trend, some reflectivity on it, and it's going to be completely transparent. But to eliminate that, we're going to model a little bit of a bulge here. I want to get rid of this. Okay, so that goes away, right in the middle of the eye. And I'm going to select that loop, and I'm going to run a really helpful script called quad caps and it just does a beautiful thing just like you've seen it now it flattens it off we can fix that but um, I think that's just a great time saver I'm going to select those polys shift up arrow I'm going to grow that selection probably one more and I'm going to bevel that bevel it so bevel tool right click and then just pull that in and I probably will create a little bit of a little bump right there okay we have a little bit of a bulge right there now I need to soften this up a little bit so I can do this I can select those and I'm going to use a fall off. So I'm going to so fall off like a selection fall off. And then I'm just going to hit the W key. We're going to move those polys up. And see if we can better match that angle. So just pull this up to get some get stuff going. And it might be good helpful to look at it from the side view. And let's take a look at the shape. So we right now we have an ease in, which may or may not work. So smooth, let's say with an ease out. And we can change the steps too. Let's go with maybe an ease in and then just reduce that back. I think that's gonna work out for us nicely. Okay, so we have we've we've moved these out and softened them in a way that's pretty pretty organic and I think it works pretty well for our purposes and when we subdivide it it still looks really good and it's a better solution in my opinion than using that pole I'm going to put another piece of geometry in here so alt C with preserve curvature active just even that out a little bit and that helps us too if it's still not round enough for you we can shift up arrow grow that selection and then hit shift s select our iterations down to one now this is a smooth tool and if you're not used to using this tool welcome to your new favorite tool because it's awesome 
I'm, you can see the mesh move a little bit and what you're doing is just sort of smoothing it and in a really just a really soft way by setting it down to just one iteration you have more control so think about doing that I might tweak that shape a little bit more but I think for now I think that's going to be pretty good that I think I'm going to scale that in just a touch if I can grab that tool ah, let me turn off my fall off okay stuff's not working for you look at what your fall off is okay and that should work for us just fine there we go okay now that's um fairly happy with that okay so let's move on to the next part first let's cut this we'll cut that geometry we'll put it in here paste it and then we will rename that as I zoom back out and then shift V we'll flip that over hit apply and now we have two eyes to work with. Because we're using the eyes to establish the volumes of the cheeks, when you start looking at it, it's easy to get lost of what's what. I want to change, I still want to be able to look through the geometry, but I don't want it to be the same color as this kind of bluish purplish color. So I'm just going to material name that. That mesh layer is selected and we'll call this eyes temp hit OK and then I'm gonna assign some transparency to it first off let's go up to hundred percent make it a little bit brighter for us and then transparency let's just see what we get something like that and the purpose of that again is so that we can work on the face mesh and establish the areas of the eyelid see the eyelids gonna come down here and follow this line we want to be able to push we want to be able to push back the face geometry to make that shape happen okay so that's just gonna help us along the way so now that we have the eyes in place let's go back to the head mesh and start to work on tightening up some of the landmark features, the nose, the mouth, etc. of the face and sort of reestablishing some of her sharp features. So again with the mesh selected, the uh, move tool selected, we're going to use multiple viewports to do that. And jump back and forth a little bit between them. We want her eyes, she's got large eyes, so we want to respect that but we do need to make them integrated so she's not bug-eyed looking. That would not be good. Again, we're using our reference images as a guide and they may or may not be correct in terms of the 3D, but we'll be able to determine that once we get into it and start to move these forms around. Now, I made a mistake already, and I didn't have symmetry on. So let's turn symmetry on, and this will happen periodically. You'll jump around. Let me just show you how to remedy this situation. So I've got symmetry on now in the X. Let's come up here to Geometry, Symmetry Tool, and then we'll click and drag to the right. And that, re that gets us our symmetry back. Okay, so we're going to keep that on. Spacebar to drop the tool. Come back to our Move tool. And let's get back to work. I'm looking at that eye line where her eyelashes are going to be. And I'm really wanting to, be, to pay attention to that, that shape. Okay, I really want that shape to, to work for us. So let's push and pull a little bit here and there. I might want to bring out 
just slightly that little area in the temple. You can see it right here. Bring that forward a little bit. Okay, and let's push back, take a look at her brow. Okay, she's got a really distinct, um, kind of a carved look to her brow area. So we want to have that represented too. So you can see I'm not making any large movements. I'm just using the tool in a very soft, kind of calculated way. I think the center line is good. Okay, we, we've, we've done pretty well with that. Now you can see in the side view of the reference art that this eyelash, okay, now a lot of this, the eye detail, we're going to be able to achieve in the retopology phase, which is coming up next, but so it's not going to be a perfect match, and that's okay. We don't have to try and match this perfectly in this particular phase. Okay, let's just, we want to get close, and then once it, it, that'll be more clear of what I'm talking about when we get to the retopology, because we'll have some nice defined areas of retopology loops around around the eyes to define the eyelids both upper and lower. And mostly right now I'm looking at getting that that shape. of the skin as it falls across the eye. I'll push this back a little bit more. And probably down a little bit. My concept art, you can see, let me just hide this this mesh. I want you to take a look at this area right here. Now in the drawing, I've got where the skin meets the eye up a little bit higher. You see it's right up here. When I reveal where we're at, it's a little bit lower. Okay, so to me, the 3D looks a little bit more accurate than the 2D drawing. So again, I can make that call whether I want to stick to, oops, I'm on the wrong mesh. I need to make that call whether I stick strictly to the to the concept art or I go with more of the the way it looks in 3D. I personally think that I don't well, I don't want her to have real bug eyes, okay? So I'm going to maybe go something in between. I pro probably will pull this out just a touch, but probably probably no more than that. And of course we can tweak this a little bit more when we get to the retopology stage, but I want to have a clear direction of where I'm going in this rough sculpt. We still need to push this back a little bit more and down a little bit more, I believe. Push it in. Again, just sort of smoothing out using the shift key in conjunction with our move sculpt tool to smooth out that ge the geometry that we have moved around. Okay, so we're, we're getting really close there. Let me just take another look at the con. Let's just toggle this off. 
Okay, let me pull back a little bit. I'm a little far in, you can see. All right, so let's just, I missed that one, so let's pull. Here we go again on the wrong mesh. Okay, head selected. Let's pull this back down. You can see that that line, just toggle that eye off. You can see we need to bring the inside edge, that skin, bring that forward a little bit. And we can do that pretty easily. That's looking pretty good. We still have we, we have a nice cavity up here, the start of one, and that's good. Smooth that out just a touch. Okay, I think this is going to be pretty good for us, pretty close, close enough, I believe, to just sort of sit with it. We're going to do kind of a final pass evaluation before we go to, to the retopo stage to make sure we have a clean line around there. Just, you know, we want clean shapes so that when we go to retopology, we're not having to guess. Okay, I'm going to work with that. You can see we don't have an eyelid defined just yet. Okay, we have established where the eye, the skin of the eyelid meets the, the eye here. Okay, and that's, that's good information. We want, might want to tuck this back just a little bit. Taking note not to disrupt the edge of where these meshes overlap because we do want to to keep that just push this back a little bit and we'll push this back even further when we get to the retopology but right now we're kind of we're kind of fighting topology right now so it's not giving us the the most ideal shape it's good enough for our purposes at this stage but we we'll want to refine that we we'll want to have more control and proper topology is going to totally give us that. All right, now I'm going to leave that eye alone and work on the nose and then also work on the nostrils or oh, the, the lips. So the nose, we're going to focus on tightening things up a bit. A lot of our shapes are, are there. They've been retained, but we've lost, you can see, we've lost some of the the point on her nose a bit. So let's get a good view, a good angle, see if we can pull that back out. And then just sort of negotiate those points down a little bit. It's not going to take much. Again, at this stage, you're really just sort of tweaking. Okay, we've taken a lot of steps earlier on to ensure that our structure is solid. And if we've done it right, then the further we get along, it's just going to be a matter of tweaking and some decision making. You know, you have to determine if it's going to look good in 2D or 3D, um, or if the 3D is going to match up to the 2D, like we, like I mentioned before. We'll pull the edge of that nostril down just a touch, and we're going to de-emphasize her nostrils, specifically like the holes in her, you know, where her nostrils are. Um, I found that with female characters. If you make those a little too prominent, um, it takes away some of the cuteness. So we want to avoid that. We want to continue to check the shapes and check, check the volume of, of the, the, the geometry that we move around. And that's looking pretty good for the nose. Okay, that gives us a really good indication of structure. We have um, a little um, bump right there. We've got some definition. We definitely have sort of a ridge around the, or, you know, a def more of a defined line um, on the bridge of the nose. It might be a little thin. We can tweak that out just a touch.
Okay, and you can see, you know, we're really just really, really small bit of definition. And that little bit of definition, that little bit of work, that tweaking has in with the eyes and with the nose, we've reestablished some of those sharp features. Alright, so let's move on to the lips. So finally we've got some nice geometry to work with. I'm going to isolate that line right there. All right, so with that selected, I'm just going to hide the selection in this viewport, and then I'm going to use my Move tool. And what that's going to do is just allow me to work on just that selection. And that's going to get me a nice little cut in there, some nice definition. That might be a little bit much. And I will often do that where I will work on, I'll either lock geometry that I'm not working on or that I don't want to influence, or I'll hide it. But I think that's going to work just fine. Doing it just a little bit like that. All right, move tool again, and let's just tighten up the bottom edge of that lip and we're going to establish a little bit more volume around the, the lip just to give it a little bit of roundness. We're really going to set ourselves up nicely for the retopology. So again, we're not really guessing where the planes of the, the face or the form are. We, we have a good idea of our hills and our valleys. So that's one thing of working with low poly geometry will give us that. It'll eliminate a lot of the guest work. The upper lip has a little bit of volume too, so don't forget that. Just pull that little middle section out a little bit. And I want to tuck in that bottom lip on edge just a little bit and then pull out that top edge of the upper lip slightly from an under view again just sort of tweaking that into place and I probably will push back that area slightly Okay, I think that's pretty good. We would like, I would like more definition in the lip, so I might tweak that slightly, but we have a good indication of, of where we're gonna go with it when we lay down our topology. So we're gonna, we have a clearly defined um, middle part, which I can probably tweak a little bit more, and I probably will tweak this a little bit more, but um, I'm happy with the form as it is right now. So the next phase, well, before we get there, let me just check the ear. I think the ear is in pretty good shape. So, yeah, we can sort of tweak that a little bit. Might as well. Okay, again, just small movements. Still retain some good volume there. We can probably go ahead and establish a little bit of more definition to that valley so that we're better set up to establish a solid surface, a solid uh, loop around there. Pushing and pulling of points is how you'll spend a lot of your time modeling. But if you do it in the right order, in the right way, it's all work that's going to benefit you later on in the project, for sure. All right, so as mentioned, I'm going to maybe spend a little bit more time tweaking, pushing and pulling a little bit, not a lot, and then we'll move on to the retopology stage next.